occasion we have dignitaries on the dais. We have Sri Amit Roy, Deputy Director General, Scientist G and Head Bangalore Branch Office. On behalf of Kaley Technological University, I extend a warm welcome to Amit Roy. Welcome sir. On this occasion, we have another dignitary on the dais, Sri R.R. Singh, Scientist F, and Head Production and General Engineering Department of Bureau of Indian Standards. Uh, on behalf of again the university, I extend warm welcome to R.R. Singh. We have uh, other uh, officers from Bureau of Indian Standards. Uh, we have uh, Bhatla, Shri Bhatla. Uh, I welcome on behalf of the university and you all. We have uh, Shri Mohammad Israfil, Scientist D, Electrotechnical Department, BIS. We have uh, a friend, uh, Mr. Bijapur, again from BIS. And uh, all the faculty, uh, we have come for this program. I extend a warm welcome to each one of you. And again on the dais, uh, I have my colleagues, uh, Dr. Thevery and Dr. Uma Mujindri. I welcome them too. With this, uh, it's again a wonderful uh, program. And uh, I appeal to all of you, to make the best use of uh, uh, the standard, about the standards which uh, the several deliberations happen till the lunch time. Uh, as far as uh, uh, I know, uh, since my uh, days of understanding, uh, there used to be like ISI, Indian Standard Institute, and we used to look for ISI mark on each of the goods. And uh, that's how uh, the standard is uh, uh, very important and ISI got uh, transformed into Bureau of Indian Standards and uh, it's again a, a good thing that BIS uh, organized this program to create awareness amongst the faculty members. Once again, I welcome one and all to this uh, particular program. Thank you. I would like to introduce Sri Amit Roy. 
Deputy Director General, Scientist and Head Bangalore Branch Office. Amit Roy, a seasoned professional with a background in civil engineering from NIT Surat Kal and a postgraduate certificate in business management from XLRI Jamshedpur with membership in the Institution of Engineers. He brings over 28 years of diverse experience to the table. His journey began at the Indian Oil Corporation Limited with he, where he specialized in designing machine foundations. Later, he transitioned to the Bureau of Indian Standards, serving under the Ministry of Consumer Affairs and Public Distribution, Government of India. I request Dr. B.S. Anami, sir, to present a memento to Sri Amit Roy. Now, I would like to introduce Sri R.R. Singh, Scientist and Head Production and General Engineering Department, BIS. R.R. Singh, a Senior Director and Scientist, has a wide expertise in engineering and law, with a B.E. in Mechanical Engineering from NIT Patna, LLB from Delhi University, and MBA from Faculty of Management Studies, Delhi University. Singh brings a diverse skill set to his role with extensive experience at Hero Honda Motors Limited and the Bureau of Indian Standards. Singh has excelled in certification, standards formulation, and leadership roles. He has notably led departments of BIS and received the AISC award in 2022 for his outstanding contributions and standardization in the automotive sector. I request Dr. B.S. Anami sir to present the memento to Sri R.R. Singh. request the dignitary on the dais to inaugurate the event by lighting the lamp. of standardization and standards not only in our daily life but also in the academic area for the country as a whole and for the society at large you know uh, you may be well aware of because uh, you are well uh, in 
the academic field that the history of standardization is uh, is almost more than 1000 years before even in the bible it was given that you know there should be a uniform order of justice and law that means what they mean by standards and standardization law slowly during the industrial revolution when the demand for machinery and industrial production grew up the demand for standard and standardization also picked up we have seen during the second world war when there was a need for mass production in germany at that time germany was one of the superpower in the world led by adolf hitler so they found that uh, they have to manufacture each and every machinery stage wise which is not only affecting the production cost their efficiency use of wastage of manpower but also it is affecting their strategy during the war because as you know you require more and more ammunition at the shortest possible time but it is not possible because you are not having standardized spare components or standardized materials then they realize the importance of standardization so when they standardize that even the nuts and bolts hexagonal nuts and bolts and different machine parts they saw that the speed of production or the mass production what they wanted within a very shortest possible time that became a reality then the concept of standardization has picked up the pace with the industrial revolution you see standardization was there in the uh, uh, in the uh, historic times also like you used to have units of measurements and weights if you see the chinese history the first chinese emperor he started the he not only standardized the chinese characters but also he has standardized the cart axles what should be the standardized distance between two axles he has also standardized the units of measurements and weights so that you know there is no quarrel among different provinces those in those days in china was a division of different provinces so there should not be any quarrel amongst different provinces so the first emperor of china he developed that concept so standardization is not a new concept it has it is more than 1000 years old only the thing is our realization was not there for example when i did my engineering basically my branch was civil engineering we used to you know uh, make use of is 456 that is rcc design is 800 for steel tables only during the design classes even we we are not aware of you know, in our engineering drawing classes there is a standard existing for engineering drawing later on when he came in the professional area then we realized that okay in the engineering drawing we used to draw a, a line and have a hash mark which actually uh, designates the ground level of that particular uh, structure or the project even there is a standard is we of showing a slope so there are different uh symbols of standardization which are existing but we are not realizing the importance even if you see in the electrical engineering arena the symbols which you are using like this that indicates resistance even we have a symbol for battery even we have a symbol for on and off switch is it not am i right or wrong so these are all standardized uh, symbols you take in the traffic regulation we have different standardized symbols for that 
Imagine in a country where red shows you go and yellow shows you stop. And green shows again you, yellow shows you move uh, cautiously and green shows you stop. What will happen? It will be chaos around the world. So the traffic signals itself are standardized. Forget about these things. Even our whole universe is standardized. The sun rises in the east, sets in the west. This is standardized. All the planets move in a particular orbit around the sun. This is also standardized. Is it not? The earth cannot revolve around the orbit of Mars. Or the Mars, it's a vice versa. The Mars cannot revolve around the orbit of Venus. The whole universe is standardized. A solar system is standardized. So, uh, as I have said that we do not realize its importance. Now, with this background, uh, in today's context, when the economy is changing very fast, it's a fast changing economy with very fast changing technology. So, we have to keep pace with the fast development that are taking place around the world. And India should not be lagging behind in this direction. So, our main aim, what I feel is to boost our economy. One of the way of boosting of economy is to increase the exports. Now, how do you increase the exports? When the Indian manufacturers, what they produce, they produce the quality goods which are acceptable at the international market. Now, how, how does it come? When, how can you increase the quality of the goods? When you use standards for the goods. Because as you know, standards is nothing but the language of quality. So, our standards, the Indian standards, uh, should be the world class standards. Even our Director General is very much focused that he always used to say in each and every forum that Indian standards should be the world class standards. And we are pursuing for that. And that is why we have come to you. Because we have seen, of course, they are from the standardization department. Off late, we have seen that, you know, all, all the stakeholders in the formulation of standards, we do not have that much encouraging attendance. Be it from the academic sector, or be it from the industry sector, or be it from any other sector. But we have realized that the knowledge base you are having, the knowledge bank we are having in the IITs and the NITs and institutions of repute like you, we are not utilizing that uh, knowledge base for formulation of the standards. For formulation of quality standards, we require quality people, naturally, people like you. So, one of the basic purpose of today's program is that we want that the knowledge base, what, whatever you are having from the faculty side, that should be utilized in the formulation of Indian standards. Simple as that. And uh, this is one of the purpose. Second purpose is we want the standards to be evidence based. Earlier, that system was not there. So, with the recent, recent initiative by the BIS management, we have started the R&D projects for formulation of the standards. Of course, there is a cap of 10 lakhs rupees for, for the R&D projects uh, as of now. But maybe in future, depending upon the arena of the research and development, the cap may be increased. So, as of now, the cap for uh, R&D projects is 10 lakhs rupees. When I say R&D, does not mean that you ha you discover some something or you develop a new thing. Doesn't mean that as of stage. It means that you should refer to the research papers, the latest technical journals in that area, uh, do some in-depth study on that, and come out with a come out with a state-of-the-art method or which is at par with at with the world, which is the latest uh, method they are following and which will ultimate articulate into the formulation of Indian standards. So, with this uh, 
that is the main purpose and uh, at the end of the program you are supposed to give some proposals for the different R&D projects that you are going to develop or you are contemplating to develop. So we have uh, in the course of the program we will show you how to, uh, how to uh, make a proposal for R&D projects. It's, everything is digital now, everything is in the portal. Uh, and moreover, you can propose for a new standard also through the portal. So that facility is there. And uh, 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 I, I hope that you make full use of this half day program uh, so that uh, our country does not lag behind as far as the standards formulation is concerned. We want your full uh, coordination and cooperation and uh, your almost a full-time dedication also for the formulation of the standards. That's what our DG wants. And uh, 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 even you may apply for as a member of your technical committee for uh, the purpose of formulation of standards. Uh, in the arena where you are expert, where we have expertise, you can apply for a member in the technical committee also. Uh, that also that provision is also there. Uh, so uh, with this background, uh, I again uh, welcome you all uh, to this half day program and I seek your uh, participation and interaction during the course of the program and I look forward to a very fruitful session. Thank you. I request Sir Shitij Batla, scientist, Electronics and Information Department, BIS, to give an overview of BIS and standardization ecosystem. Uh, thank you to all the uh, previous speakers, specifically to Amit Roy sir. Uh, he has already set the tone and informed you uh, what is the aim and uh, of this uh, today's workshop. So with this, uh, we have uh, to, uh, in today's session total four sessions. Uh, starting with, uh, first of all, we will be informing you about uh, giving you background of Bureau of Indian Standards. And then uh, a next session would be related to, uh, because uh, Bureau of Indian Standards and KLE have already signed an MOU for collaboration between standardization and co conformity assessment. So what are the expectations that uh, will be, we will be informing? And after that, uh, in the next uh, third session, we will be informing you about uh, the digital initiatives which Bureau of Indian Standards have already taken up and how all the uh, things, all the information you can uh, browse through the Bureau of Indian Standards website that will be informed and giving you an overview of uh, Bureau of Indian Standards Technical Committee's standard formation structures and at the last related to uh, R&D projects uh, that what are the R&D projects as of now on the offer, how you can propose and how you can uh, even uh, I would say uh, send your proposal for R&D activities to be taken up. So all these activities will be uh, taking over in today's session. So starting with first uh, oh, overview of BIS and standardization process. So uh, BIS as already informed, uh, we are the national standards body of India uh, and uh, we are uh, as of now established by Bureau of Indian Standards Act 2016. So our legacy, uh, just like uh, I came to know that uh, KLE is also since uh, 1947, so Bureau of Indian Standards is also from the 1947 and but before that also uh, when during the colonial period, uh, Bureau of Indian Standards uh, was kind of established as an institution of engineers uh, under the committee of British Standards Committee under, in 1919 and after that uh, as a register society and uh, I, as, as ISI and after that we came to I would say uh, uh, give, uh, Government of India uh, established an act in 1986 and then we came to known as Bureau of Indian Standards. Before that, uh, Indian Standards Institute was there. The ISI mark that you still used to see uh, is because earlier we were known by ISI, uh, Indian Standards Institute. And now the latest act through which we are governed is 2016. And now we are the National Standards Body of India. So all the standards which are to be Indian standards would be established by uh, only by Bureau of Indian Standards. Even for the participation of, uh, I would say, the international level activities as well, that is also through Bureau of Indian Standards. 
So this is uh, the BIS uh, locations that we uh, standards activities. Apart from that, we have the certification activities under in our branch offices uh, that is located in, in each and every state of India. We have uh, five regional offices: uh, North, Center, South, West, and East. And we have the 38 branch offices and eight labs. We have lab in uh, Guwahati, we have lab in Chennai, we have a lab in uh, Mumbai, we have a lab in Patna, we have lab in Kolkata, we have a lab in uh, Mohali and in CL uh, Central Lab we have in, in Saibabad area that is in Delhi. So these eight labs we have that cater to our uh, conformity assessment schemes uh, that the products which we are all in the certification activities we take the samples from them test it and get it uh, based on those reports the certification is granted to uh, the licenses and the companies so the activities that uh, standardization is the core activities being the national standards body and apart from that conformity assessment uh, laboratory uh, activities that i was informing the eight eight labs we have the eight labs we have that are the bis labs but apart from that we have uh, we also recognized other government or private labs that are we called OSL out, uh, outside recognized labs. Those are also utilized by Bureau of Indian Standards for the activities under the conformity assessment schemes. And then we have a training institute uh, as well, which is uh, National Institute of Training for Standardization. Uh, that is in our uh, NOIDA in Sector 62 that we will inform in the later slides as well. So coming to standards specifically, uh, I would say I should not dwell into that because uh, Amitra sir has already informed you what do we mean by standard, but this is a, the standard definition that what is the standard we have is definition of standard as per the ISO guide to ISO is uh, international standards organization that develops standards in the different areas. Uh, we have two, uh, I would say those organizations uh, at the international level, ISO and IEC, in which BIS participate, and ISO has standardized the definition of standard as well is in the ISO guide. This is just, I'm displaying that the document which is uh, established by consents and approved by a recognized body that provides for common and repeated use rules, guidelines, or characteristics for activities or their results aimed at achievement of the optimum degree of order in a given context. So this is the standard definition and this, it is based on consents. Uh, cons what do we mean by consents uh, is that there is no sustained objections. It, it, when, whenever we will be discussing on a topic, uh, we will all have a different uh, opinions on the same specific topic. But the consents mean is that uh, we, most of the people uh, are aligned in this one of the, I would say, view on that topic. And then we say that it's a consensus uh, has been achieved and there's no sustained objection. That is what we mean by uh, consensus here. Types of standards, uh, we have the basic standards, uh, terminology standards, the vocabulary standards uh, that define the, some specific uh, things. For example, I would say uh, the area of uh, activity in which as of now I am involved uh, is the electronics as well as the IT. In the IT field, uh, we have uh, recently uh, define the terms related to uh, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is already, I would say, a field which is uh, more than 50 years uh, uh, from, uh, it's still in there, but a standard definition was not there. There are definitions which are uh, in the field of academia is there, industry is using, but a standard definition in the terms of standard was not there. That was recently defined. So in these lines, for each and every field, we have, first of all, uh, the standards which define the terms because once we have the standards, we have a common understanding of what we mean by a type C port, what we mean by uh, the microphone. Only then uh, we can have the same level of uh, collaborations and interactions. Then we have the uh, testing standards, product standards, testing standards that how to test a particular uh, requirement which is given for a product. For example, in the microphone, if we want to see the frequency response, we will be defining a specific uh, that on, at 
which uh, type of uh, pa testing parameters as well as the testing equipment should be used and what will be the environmental conditions or the conditions to be set for the equipments, uh, testing equipments. All these things are we define in the testing standards and in the product standards we uh, mainly define the requirements of the product. Uh, taking the example of again the microphone, uh, for the microphone what should be the uh, noise cancellation if it could have generally in the hearing aids or in the, I would say the earbuds, not in the specifically microphone, but some microphones uh, do have that. So what should be the decibel levels it can, the sensitivity of its that if I speak very feebly, still it can capture or I am speaking very loudly, still it can capture and produce the output in as a qualitative sound so that the, or the audience that can hear better. So that all these things would be uh, in the product standards. Then we have the process and uh, system standards. Process standards will uh, mentions the a kind of defining the process to achieve a specific thing. And systems for developing a whole systems uh, like we have the uh, quality systems, uh, quality management system uh, ISO 9000. We have the stand uh, systems for the in in energy management stand standards. We have the information security management standards that 27001. The similarly, there are uh, different standards for the system as well. And then uh, service standards are the latest one uh, that we are now uh, uh, going into the domain of the services as well that for each and every service, how that service is to be delivered. For that also, we define standards. So principles of standardization uh, that it should be transparent, uh, I would say, these are the defined terms. We will be providing you the stand, uh, these slides as well. Basically, who co all can contribute the standard that should be open to everyone. It should not be restricted so that only the views of some members could be taken up. It should not be like that. Everyone can come and contribute to the development of standardization that we call the openness, transparency, that what are the views we are gathering, how we are resolving those things that should be open. So everyone should be aware of that, how we actually develop standards. Then uh, impartiality and concerns, concerns I already informed, the impartiality, we should not be partial to one specific view by, provided by some organization or some specific uh, person, uh, that's the impartiality as the literal term is there. Then we have the effectiveness, coherence, development dimensions uh, that whatever we are developing should be effective and relevant for the product or the service to be utilized. It should take into all the dimensions of that product. For, for example, uh, I would say considering the present scenarios, now we have a major focus on sustainability. So if whenever we are developing any standards related to any product, so we, if we are taking the sustainability dimensions as well, so it will be taking care of uh, these principle of uh, uh, standardization. So, till now, sustainability, was not there specifically in all, all of the standards, uh, product standards or other service standards as well. But now, because there is a main focus, so these are the things now we are taking care of, so it in a way captures those uh, dimensions. Concerns, I uh, basically already uh, informed you what we mean by this. This is the standard definition of uh, concerns. They will say that we can mention that if there's no absence of sustained opposition, but it's the meaning is which I already uh, informed to you all of you. So now, uh, standard formulation activity, what is the, uh, what do we do in standard formulation activity? In standard formulation activities, these are the major stakeholders. We want to try to have the consumers, uh, R&D organizations, uh, regulators, uh, testing labs, uh, academia, uh, manufacturers, industry associations, even uh, in some of the committees uh, based on the requirements or based on their expertise, we have the individual experts as well. They are not representing anyone, they are in their individual capacity. So these are the uh, stakeholders which we try to have in each and every committee uh, so that we develop the standards by taking care of views of all the stakeholders which would be relevant for that particular product or particular I would say the field. Uh, we have uh, a structure format for standardization. We in, have identified 16 areas in which we are developing standards that we call the division council. We have the 16 division councils. Uh, under that we have I would say I 
just go to the directory, this one. The third one, the Division Council, these are the, area, uh, the technical committees of BIS, which are, uh, I would say, interested for the development of standards. We have different uh, 16 with the civil, electrical, uh, electrotechnical, is, electronics and IT, food, uh, mechanical, uh, petrochemical, chemical, these are dif uh, different divisions uh, are there that those are responsible for standardization in those particular areas. And in those particular areas, we have then sectional committees, sectional committees or panels or subcommittees or working groups that are mm -hmm. under that division council. For example, uh, in the area of the uh, belongs to the electronics and IT, we have the different committees in the field of, I would say, the audio video. We have in the field of information security and privacy, one sectional committee would be there. Then we have the for dependability and reliability, one sectional committee for the waveguides we have. Uh, the electromagnetic compatibility, the EMI, EMC, for that that particular area in that uh, electrons and IT we have. So in like that we have for, we identified the areas, 16 areas, under that we go to further drilling down those areas and those sectional committees would be responsible for that particular areas. The EMI, EMC would be uh, developing standard for that particular EMI, EMC domain and under EMI, EMC, as well, if we want to have the EMI, EMC, I would say, just for example, I'm not that it's not the practical situation. Uh, EMI, EMC for a particular product, if I want to see, then that could be a we could, could give a task to a one particular uh, a develop a com working group or panel of uh, five to ten people and then give task that. Group. But that could be under that sectional committee. So this in this way, the, st uh, the structure is there of the sixteen divisional councils, three eighty five uh, sectional committees and. 1017 the panel or subcommittees or working groups we have uh, at, at, as of now in European standards for different areas. This is uh, that list of the 16 divisional councils that I was explaining is Ayush and the service sector. That These are the, the recent one. Uh, earlier we used to have the only 14 then we introduced the service sector that came 15 and then Ayush is a, a very recent one. Uh, the sector in which we will be developing uh, standards now. So this is just uh, a, a information thing, but uh, that how this, because I, we informed you that we are governed by the Bureau of Indian Standards Act. So under the Bureau of Indian Standards Act, we have different provisions and division councils are uh, under section 10 uh, of uh, Bureau of Indian Standards Act. So division council is a uh, committee which would be also established every three years. The, above the division council, if you would have seen the structure, uh, the, there was standards advisory committee. That standards advisory committee reconstitute the division councils every three years and the functions of division councils in the main guiding to the sectional committees which are under the division councils that in which areas they could develop standards and as well as the constitution of the sectional committee, that is also in the power of the uh, division council. Whenever the new work item would come up, a new work item means the proposal for standardization in that specific area. So that is to be uh, decided by that division council that then allocate to the specific sectional committees under that domain, then final decision is taken whether standard would be developed in that, uh, that particular proposal or not. So there are different, uh, uh, I would say the functions of region council that I leave on in this I have already informed you. Then uh, if an R&D work is to be taken that is also uh, division council could be. In nutshell, division council the major area uh, act, uh, function is to decide on the new work item proposals, constitute the sectional committees, if anything to be constituted uh, for the new uh, area to be taken up, that would be there. It's an advising body and decision of approvals of development standard that is also taken by there. Major standard development that is by the sectional committee that would come uh, later on. Chairperson uh, would be the chairperson of the division council. Chairperson of division council is uh, appointed by the standards advisory committee and that is also for the three years and it could be uh, again uh, reappointed for further three years. Uh, 
uh, and this we generally try to have the uh, the person who is from that background uh, government or r and d institutes that is the major uh, expectations and we earlier generally tried to have the one meeting for the regional council but now we are trying to have it more than one meetings as well in a year for that regional council because the regional council is mainly for the guidance and formal approvals so next comes this uh, the structure the session committee that is constituted by the regional council we have the member secretary uh, the officers of bis are the member secretary i being uh, from the bureau of standards standards handles uh, four to five sectional committees everyone have the difference as of now i am handling the four sectional committees i am the member secretary of four sectional committees and under that we have the members so members would be just like i previously explained it could be from the r and d it could be from academia manufacturers industry associations uh, and now we are expecting that from you all people you could uh, as based on your interest could become member of the sectional committees and then we have this uh, this try to have the composition because we are open for the inputs of all the all the members but to have the balanced uh, composition and as well as to take care uh, and to man manage the sectional committee effectively as well we try to restrict the main sectional committee strength normally to 30 but we have different sectional uh, uh, panels and working groups to through we take care of other members and inputs everyone can provide and just like the regional council uh, is reconstituted every 3 years uh, this is sectional committee is also reconstituted every 3 year what the sectional committee would be doing that is all uh, decided by the regional council as the in terms of the title and scope of that sectional committee so who could be Individual experts, organization, and organization could nominate one principal member, second alternate member, and there could be also a third representatives uh, that could be uh, a young professional uh, below the age of 37 years, or there could be uh, the female uh, representative, uh, another representative that could be uh, the possibility uh, to in to maintain the gender uh, to and to promote gender equality. The third person could be young professional or the female representative, apart from the principal and alternate chair person of sectional committees just like the for the division council the uh, standards advisory committee appoints for the sectional committee division councils appoint the chair persons uh, of the sectional committee and they are also from the same background they should be from that particular field reconstituted uh, after 3 years uh, reappointed uh, and, uh, after 3 years then we have the expectations for tc members we have listed out uh, i would say uh, more than 15 to 20 expectation in in nutshell i would uh, explain the what are the expectation is that a proposal would come up for us for development of a standard then you as an expert of that member committee have to provide your view whether we can develop that proposal whether that is the right proposal to be developed or not i will give you an example uh, in one of my committee we had received a proposal uh, that proposal was they had given proposal for standard development but actually that was for the r and d to uh, develop a algorithm which would give uh, i would say when we uh, as of now i am speaking if we will be hearing the recording uh, in the channels the recordings then the loudness of that if we go to one switch to one channel to second channel the loudness level of every channel is different even uh, sometimes in between uh, advertisements the volume suddenly picks up so what could be th the algorithm to maintain that so they wanted to kind of uh, develop that algorithm that is a kind of a good proposal but not a standard because algorithm development is not standardization Al in per se it's, it's in would say in the terms of standards and overall you could say the algorithm uh, in the cryptography the standards are uh, algorithms only but for in this one specifically it's not a standard to develop based on their r and d and development of algorithm then we can think of development of a standard for the uh, to how to maintain the uh, loudness broadcast of the different channels so that the different proposals we receive and your views would be invited for at that time that what are your views and how we uh, take it forward another would be we 
participate in international standards and activities as well. We dif receive different proposals, different draft standards from the uh, IS and ISC committees. So as a member of the committee, you have to provide your inputs on those standards and proposals as well, whether we are in favor of development of that proposal, whatever views on the content of that standard, that if there is a requirement given that uh, the output should be minus 80 dB, whether we are agree to that, practically it would be 80 dB or not, what could be our, your view based on your expertise. So these kind of expectations during the development of standards are there, then uh, because the committee has to take a decision on the request to become a member, so that decisions are also taken by the, based on the concerns of the committee members, then we could say uh, if we want to develop a sub uh, group of the session committee for a particular field of I would say the panel of working which panel of working group which I was planning. So that authority is also with the session committee. So as a member of the committee, you would be the deciding uh, persons to work whether we should develop a uh, constitute a panel of working group for a particular field in those specific areas. So this kind of different uh, uh, expectations we have from the member. Uh, R and D proposals that we are now specially focusing on, evaluation of that R and D and preparation of that R and D proposals, terms of reference of that R and D proposal. That is also the task of the committee. That is to be done by the committee. So these are the I mean, the major tasks in standard development. All the related activities which would be in the standard development process. Functions of sectional committee. Uh, what are, whatever I informed you that your ex, uh, uh, we are expecting from you that is that uh, task to by the sectional committee. Development of standard, deciding on the proposals, uh, revising those standards. Uh, uh, every uh, year we try to have four meetings for the sectional committee. So your participation because if you want to participate, then we can't have the meeting. Then managing all the, doc the those documents which would be in there, reviewing those documents uh, after uh, every document once it is published as a standard has to be reviewed uh, after five years. That is the procedure for electronics and IT after three years. So not after three years, within three years we have to decide whatever is our view, whether we want to retain that standard as it is, we whether we want to uh, confirm that standard uh, that we call permission without any changes or whether we want to withdraw the standard because the technology has been updated. So these are the uh, tasks also of the committee that related to the document, uh, meeting management, uh, committee management is also that I informed related to uh, constitution of the panels or working groups, international work that if we are associated with some specific international committee, so whatever documents proposals, standard development, even as a member of uh, Bureau of Internal Standards Committees, we participate in the relevant ISO and ISC committees. So it's not that whatever documents are coming from there, only you provide your inputs to uh, those documents. We also propose standards for development at ISO and ISC level. So that is also the expectations and that is also the work of the sectional committee that would be relevant for that specific uh, ISO and ISC committees. So, till now I was explaining that you have to decide uh, on the proposal, you have to develop the standards when once you have uh, become a member of the committee, but what is the process of formulation of standard? So process of standard formulation is that first of all, someone would provide a proposal. It could be committee itself could also decide that we want to develop a standard. Any member, any individual person, any organization, irrespective of whether uh, that organization or person is a member of the committee or not, could provide a proposal at any time of the stage. They can. We have a provision at PIS website. We will inform you in the next sessions. You can go there and provide a proposal. Once proposal is there, then relevant division council as well as the sectional committee would uh, meet or over the course of correspondence decide whether we want to develop. Then that. If that is approved, then that is assigned to a specific group, either session committee on their own or a panel of working group would be established. Then they will develop the first working draft, the first document. If during the uh, proposal stage itself we have a draft, then that's the expectation also that if a working draft is provided, then the task is very easy and we can work further on. But if just an idea is there, then first we have to develop a document, that working draft 
what, what we call is the parking draft. Once the, the group to which we have assigned the task of development of parking draft, that agree, that have the concerns that now it's a good draft, it could, uh, it's a mature stage, it could be taken up uh, for the further steps, then we take it as a plenary draft. Plenary draft stage is that at this stage it is circulated among only the sectional committee. No, and sectional committee would decide uh, whether any changes are required or not. If sectional committee also has a concerns and they approve this, then it comes to the wide circulation draft. Wide circulation draft is the stage at which anyone, whether a member or not, could provide inputs. At this stage, we put up the draft on Bureau of Indian Standard website. It is in public domain. Anyone can go to that draft, have a look into and provide their inputs, whatever changes they want. Or, or they can also mention that there are no changes, they can just, uh, ask that they agree with this draft. Whatever inputs we received on the wide circulation draft, we resolve those and then it is becomes the final draft, that's, it's the final draft and then it, uh, our decision council uh, formally adopt that standard and then it goes for publication and it's finally published as a uh, standard. Similar is the process for the ISO IC as well. That is the difference is that here the sectional committee and division councils are deciding there, but at ISO and IC level, countries decide. We as a, uh, from India, we are representing, so we have a one vote there. So India, France, USA, Japan, all they decide whether we want to develop a standard. Just like here the decision by the sectional committee, their decision is by the member. Also the committee is there but deciding is there by votes. In, but in, at India level, we just decide based on the concerns, not by voting. ISO IC level, we have to decide by, uh, for every stage there are different, two by third majority, one by third majority, that kind of things are there. But once you build in the standardization process, then you will get to know about all those things as well. That was what I, in between explaining you uh, with ISO IC as well, that we participate regularly at ISO and IAC as well. Uh, ISO and IEC are the major two standardization activities at the international level. Apart from that, ISO and IEC, uh, ITU is also there, that is International Technical Commission Union, but uh, Bureau of Industry Standards do not directly participate in ITU activities. Uh, another domain of the Ministry of Communication, uh, the Department of Telecom, they participate in ITU on behalf of India, but I and ISO and IEC, only BIS participates. What we do there what is similar to what we are doing at the national level. We participate in the meetings, we propose, provide proposal for standardization, we provide our inputs to the standards uh, which are being developed that have been proposed by other countries. That is the, uh, related to the standard development. Apart from that, we also uh, have uh, the WTO TBT inquiry point. So, W countries uh, utilize the standards uh, in the terms of the technical regulations. Just like Sir was uh, explaining uh, in the past uh, that if we want to increase our export, so our st product should be conforming to the stand international standards. So what usually countries do is that they mention that your product, if you are uh, exporting to our country, then that should confine to so and so standard. So for the, all these things, first they have to notify all these things in the uh, uh, World Trade Organization, TBT, Technical Barriers to Trade, and uh, there there is a portal in which they all this information is there, and we are the inquiry point. Any inquiry related to uh, WTO, TBT is there, then Bureau of Industry Standards is the inquiry point, that information we can provide. Then we have uh, uh, some bilateral agreements with many of countries as well. Uh, India. Uh, that ISO and IEC that I was uh, informing is that in ISO, uh, that as at that time BIS was not there, that was the ISI and all those, uh, uh, our aristocratic stores there, that India is the founder member of ISO, but for IEC we are a member, not a founding member, but both of, at, at this stage we are at the, I would say, uh, in the top management levels of both IS and IEC. Uh, the, uh, earlier, I uh, don't remember this actually the year, but uh, for pre uh, Vice President for, of ISO was for one time our uh, 
earlier uh, well, uh, director general dr lalsi parman was the president uh, vice president of iso as well so membership status these are just statics that in iso 697 and ic 174 these are different uh, the committees in which we are participating we are mentioning the p and o member we participate at iso level in there are two ways the p membership and o membership p membership is that we are actively participating we have the obligation as well to contribute and to provide our inputs and to uh, to voting but in o of we are just observing we have no obligation it and where we would be p member or where would be o member that we decide based on our national priorities and the based on the expertise of the members we have at that time so in this way we participate at international standards activities so this is related to sports structures that uh, what we are expecting is that r and d uh, what whatever r and d activities we are emphasizing for standard development through our mou institutes and through our committee members we can do those uh, r and d uh, activities and uh, the members Uh, could get access to the documents which we have being a, a MOU institute, international collaboration, and as well as the participation in the committee work. That is the expectations is there. That's uh, most of things I have already covered. This is related to the NITS that we do provide training related to standards, related to our some some certification activities. How once you would be a member and you would be new member, then also uh, you will be imparted training. for overall standard development now we i'm just explaining you in very brief the detail process there will be training program for standard development process that our national institute of training provides those trainings apart from that we do also provide some uh, international training programs and training programs are i would say on campus as well as off campus if required our uh, mentors can come to the specific institute and also provide the training so this is the one specific information that our uh, nits is the one of the training institutes identified by ministry of external affairs under special commonwealth Af african assistance program indian technical and economic cooperation and colombo plan for developing countries that i was doing the international act standards activities we do so this is uh, part of that activities only so standard promotion and consumer uh, engagement we standard development is one thing but if you are not aware of what we are developing a standard then standard would of be no use until unless these are not promoted and used for that purpose we do the standard promotion and consumer engagement activities so uh, the establishment of standard clubs just like uh, the kles in the civil have the standard club we try to have the standard club to be in each and every institute that is part of our promotion activities then state level committees of standardization in every state the slcs committees are held that are uh, coordinated by our respective branch offices to apprise the the cop at the, all the government functionaries what is the, as of now going going to the standardization and conformity assessment slcs as well as uh, in between we had uh, organized orientation program for the district level officers as well in each and every district the dcs uh, the edcs or the adm dm that level we were sensitizing related to standards so that because ultimately these are the uh, departments or these are the institutes they we are utilizing the products they should be aware of that these are the products should be adhering to so and so standards so, so, so they if they become aware then ultimately they will utilize these products and the standards would be actually utilized and quality the purpose of all this what is the purpose of the standard that would be ultimately achieved only by these things then these are the just uh, other informations that we do the exposure visits of students and uh, to the industries as well so that students get aware of these activities from the very beginning then in just brief uh, not more taking more than 2 or 3 minutes uh, related to the conformity assessment this was related to all the standard development process now once we have standard now what we do with the standard we utilize it we utilize it for the development of a standard uh, for a product specific product or we utilize it for the specific process or service so for that if we have the conformity assessment scheme in conformity assessment scheme is that uh, manufacturer is there uh, you can say organization as well because this slide is particularly related to the where a product would be there it, you can imagine it for the services and processes as well where manufacturer organization would be there and consumer is there so 
to make uh, to have that both of these entities have the trust on that product or services that is if a third party kind of a give a assurance that this has been developed or a product by a specific conforming to specific standards so that is the conformity assessment in product certification activities that specifically the process of certifying that a certain product has passed performance test and quality assurance test that is the product certification and bis being third party here uh, do those activities for the uh, benefit of the consumers and the consumers so these are the certification marks as of the, the isi mark that still is there on this water bottles even on the fan uh, these have the isi marks if you see that is our the scheme one the product certification then we have the compulsory resolution scheme mark uh, on your each of you would be having a mobile phone right now in mobile phone this mark shall be there if this mark is not there so that is legally not permissible so this resolution mark would be there uh, for um, 47 uh, electronic electrical and electronic side products as of now uh, i think are there which uh, as of now i enforce but some other tend to uh, so th that are not uh, i believe uh, enforced still um, just like once an it i'm saying but in crs compulsory restriction that servicing 77 all products are there but electronic products or it products that are uh, the 47 and more and more are being included there in uh, this activity then we have uh, the management system certification mark related to the system, management system standard, the ISO 9000, 14000, uh, 127001. Then this one is the hallmark there, that BIS uh, in the jewelry hallmark is there. It should, it's a mandatory uh, for the gold jewelries to be hallmarked. BIS logo. Then the purity of gold, it's 22K, 916, or if it's 14K or 18K, whatever will be there, that purity should be informed. And then six digit unique code, which is the HUID code. If that is there, then this is a Hallmark product and that should be there. That you can also, we will explain in the next session that how you can check that this ISI mark, this resolution mark, this management system mark, and Hallmark, these are authentic marks or not. On the BIS website, we have provisions. We have a BIS Care app. Just go to Play Store. You can download, and all these things can be checked there. Then uh, all these things were the certification activities. But Government of India has mandated some of the products to have the mandatory uh, certification and the mandatory license from the Bureau of Indian Standards. So these are some of the uh, products which are there and based. On what basis uh, government decide is that based on the health, safety, security, infrastructure requirements that if these are mandatory uh, get the certification on BIS or they can have to voluntarily do the certification. So the cookers, the helmets, the water bottles, the slanders, the transform of the cement, all these are there, the toys specifically, the recently one, the main focus was on the toys, all these are under mandatory uh, certification scheme of uh, Bureau of Indian Standards. Then uh, we, just like we are doing it for the national level, we are doing this the for foreign manufacturers as well, so that if they are bringing their products to the India, so that we do the foreign uh, manufacturer certification scheme that is related to that FMCS scheme. So I think that was overall mm -hmm. of Bureau of Indian Standards, standardization activity, and some information related to the certification uh, activities of BIS as well. Uh, if you have any query, you can ask right now or afterwards, that's your wish. Sir, I have doubt here. Yes, please, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. You mentioned about the chemicals, various categories, including chemicals. The pharmaceuticals come under that, if yes, how you coordinate between the FDA standards and your uh, so, DA standards? Uh, you're right, sir. So, for that, the uh, the PESCO for the petroleum side and for the chem chemical C uh, our the CDESCO for those we are coordinating for that because for the pharmaceutical they are the major I would say the regulatory institution but the, they refer some of the standards which are published by Bureau of Indian Standards in their regulations in that way we are coordinating with them. Well, it may be true for even food products also. 
tools for food, food products as well. Uh, for food products, uh, FSSAI is there. They are giving the licenses, but they ultimately the standards which are there, uh, these are developed by the Bureau of Indian Standards, and based on those, they are uh, providing the FSSAI uh, licenses uh, uh, for the food products. So, standards would be from BIS. The regulatory uh, activity, uh, I would say, the regulatory organizations are different. Based on their decisions, either BIS directly do the certifications or they on their own do also certification. But these are the major things as of now that BIS is doing. Thank you. Okay, so I think there are no further queries. Then thank you. I request Sri R R Singh, scientist and head production and General Engineering Department, BIS, to speak on the collaboration of BIS with academia and the outreach of program. Faculty members of uh, KLE Technological University. As uh, has been mentioned by the previous speakers, Shetes and uh, Amit Roy, sir, uh, we already know that uh, without standards we cannot imagine even a single industrial activity. Not only industrial activity, even the personal activity we cannot imagine. Right from the time when we wake up in the morning to the time when we go to sleep, knowingly or unknowingly we are following many standards. For example, when we get up in the morning, we switch on the light. The switches which we use, they are according to some standard. The light bulbs which we switch on is also according to some standard. The paper which we put into the printers, they are also according to the standard. The sizes of the paper are also standardized. For example, you can put any A4 size paper in any, any printer and you get the printout. Can you imagine any situation where you, all the paper sizes are different? then you will require only a specific size paper for a specific size printer and that will be a hell of a problem for all of us. So standards are helping us in many ways. In personal level also we have set some standards for ourselves. For example, we want to exceed, excel in life, we have set some standard. If we want to get discipline, we have, got, we have set some standard for ourselves. So like Amit Royce has said that if we, want, if we want to become world class, then we have to set world class standards not only for the products which we are doing, which we are going to manufacture, but with the, the personality which we all are going to possess as Indian citizens, we have to set a very world class standard for that also. Now, uh, the standards can have its uh, so, social implications, it can have it there in economic impact, they can have uh, political issues also and for educational institutions they are more predominantly important only because through educational institutions, through schools and colleges, a quality culture can be inculcated into the students and these students when they go out and become consumers or manufacturers, the quality culture is so ingrained in them that they cannot think beyond quality. For example, if we look at the citizens of uh, some developed countries and some advanced countries of the world, for example Japan, the quality culture is so embedded in them right from the childhood that they cannot think beyond quality, they cannot think of producing a substandard quality product. So if we produce a quality product, then not only we are utilizing the national resources to their best possible use, but we are, we are also uh, reducing the cost of production because any rejection which is produced in any factory that add cost to the final product. So in this way, the students when they pass out from the colleges and when they become an informed consumer, they can not only produce good quality products but they will also as an informed customer, they will force the, uh, the manufacturers to produce good quality products. So all these are inherent uh, importance, inherent uh, advantages of sticking to a good quality culture in any country. So, For example, if we take the example of Toyota, the Toyota model work, 
quality control model is a world class model. The ones what happened that they had, they had to cut the price of vehicle by some percentage. And what they did, without compromising on the on the quality of the product, they reduced one gram from each component which they had to manufacture. So in that process, without compromising, they they cut the cost of the product. And the quality and then the Toyota Model 14 quality principles of Toyota motors are there, then those quality control models are followed all over the world for quality control processes. So now our aim is not only to have a good quality product, but also the processes which are involved in manufacturing the products, they should also be world class and they should also follow some quality standards. Now in education, in e-commerce, everywhere because now the things are going to be standardized more and more in the years to come. Now we have got B2B, B2C and all such kinds of e-commerce activities. And there the IT industry has to be standardized. The cyber security issues are there. They have to be addressed through standards. And all such things, they have to be addressed through the quality standards which we are going to formulate. As uh, the AI uh, interventions are going to be there, Industry 4 is going to come. And there the standardization is going to be more and more important. Now our aim as a faculty member, I request all of you to just have a thought. Consciously you have to think about how you can contribute to the standardization. All the subjects which you are teaching in the, in, in the various uh, curricula, you, you should think that uh, what all standards can be there and see at our website because now our standards are free of cost, so you can download the standards related to the course curriculum which you are teaching and see whether the standards are up to date or not. If something is required to be put into the standard, you are most welcome to give your comments on those uh, standards so that the standards can be updated. And gradually you can just also, also make your students think about the standardization process and the standard Indian standards which have been formulated in various various uh, disciplines. For example, in civil engineering, we have got various codes already part of curricula, but in other disciplines, the, the standards are not that uh, predominant. So, where, the, so there, what we have to do, for example, if you are teaching refrigeration, air conditioning, you have to see what all standards are there on the air conditioners or refrigerators or condensers or, cap or uh, capacitors or compressors and you can just see whether those standards are up to date as of uh, according to the today's technology or not. So these are some of the things which if we start doing it right now and uh, as Amit Roy Sada said that we can also take up some small R&D projects where uh, you can just go through some of the literatures which are available on various uh, uh, standards, compare them and just uh, bring out a kind of a gap analysis so that the standards can be updated. So these are some initiatives, this, this is just a beginning, but later on we'll improve upon these initiatives and we'll, we'll have a, a very strong standardization and quality conscious, uh, not only manufacturing uh, community, but a very strong academic institutional fraternity also that will be involved in standardization process. So now BIS uh, has taken some initiative in this regard. We have uh, signed MOUs with various institutes and uh, uh, I'm very happy to just inform that uh, this KLE has also signed MOU with BIS. Then some of the expectations from this kind of uh, educational outreach program is uh, shown in this presentation. So these are, uh, the MU objectives are to participate in standardization activity through technical committees of the Bureau at national and international level. What it means that any, any professor or any teaching faculty, if he or she wants to become a member of BIS technical committee, he or she is most welcome for that. And the process for uh, that will be explained to you later on through some other uh, presentation. Then R&D project we have already explained. So we can, uh, you can take R&D projects related to standardization and conformity assessment. 
develop infrastructure support for R&D projects of relevance to standardization. The BIS will provide infrastructure support for R&D project of relevance to standardization, the terms and conditions for infrastructure support and finance to be jointly worked out based on the R&D projects. And uh, the MU institutions can also provide IT based technological solutions regarding various activities of BIS including conformity assessment processes as has been required. So for example if some institute is very uh, very sound and very strong in some, some area that, that, kind of, that kind of support can also be given to BIS for that. Jointly organize uh, seminars, conferences, workshops, symposia or lectures on type topics of standardization and conformity assessment and to invite each other's faculty to participate therein. Now exchange publications and other literature of common interest related to standardization. Exchange information on research and educational programs and other programs relevant to standardization. Institute to consider introduction of topics on standardization in academics for which Bureau will, would provide all inputs required to create teaching modules on the concept of uh, standardization. Jointly organize training and short term educational programs on standardization. Explore the possibility for setting up a center of excellence in field of standardization, testing and conformity assessment at the institute and explore the possibility of hiring of institute's faculty as consultants on a second -hand basis. So these are some of the initiatives. Now the work forward is, the first thing uh, which we can do is to have, uh, uh, to start teaching, uh, teaching of standards in the course curricula. For example, IIT Roorkee has taken a very good initiative and they have introduced a basic four hours course in either first or second semester and that course is mandatory for all the students. So there only basics of standardization will be taught and some credit uh, will also be given to the students for completing that course. In addition to that, if we can uh, just identify which all standards can be linked to the course curricula. For example, if we are teaching IC engines, that the standards related to IC engines can be taught in the class or some kind of introduction can be given so that the students become aware about the standards, how they are written and about the contents of the standards so that when they go out in the industry, they don't find themselves uh, unaware about the standards because the standards are used everywhere in the industry. Every industry has got a library and there all Indian and international standards are available and they are invariably used in manufacturing, R&D, quality control in all areas of production. Then the other thing is that uh, we, can, we can just in, uh, involve the faculty in the, sta in the standardization process. I think each faculty has got some kind of specialization and if the faculty thinks that their, his or her uh, specialization can be utilized in national standardization process, then the faculty is most welcome to contact BIS and offer his or her expertise in standard foundation process. In addition to this, we have got on the academic uh, dashboard on BIS uh, standardization portal. I request all of you to just update it so that uh, your information can be shared with other institutes also. Uh, we have been told that every department has got its own uh, laboratory manual and in those laboratory manuals various international standards have been referred. Now our endeavor is to uh, replace those international standards with Indian standards so that the Indian standards can be used as far as possible. Now, as a lab uh, in charge or lab uh, professors, uh, your uh, a small responsibility will be to just uh, look at the lab manuals and just identify which all international standards such as ASTM, DIN or EN or other standards have been referred in them and let us know so that we can update our database and if standards are available on those subjects we can also inform you accordingly and if the standards are not there then we can formulate the standards so that later on all these international standards can be updated in your lab manuals. So in this way 
we'll be having our own Indian standards referred in lab manuals and that will aid to our national spirit also. Now we have, we have started a lecture series also on a particular day of every month uh, depending upon the departments. For example, we'll be having a several uh, separate series for uh, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, electronics, computer science and so on. So I request all of you, all these information will be available and I request all of you, it will be a webinar kind of thing. So I request uh, all the faculty and the students, uh, faculty to disseminate this information among the students and join the webinars so that the and, uh, uh, awareness kind of thing can be created and the students can know about what all standards are there in various disciplines of engineering. So these are some of the initiatives which BIS has taken and uh, yeah this is this is the initiative taken by IIT Roorkee and it can also be uh, duplicated here in Kelly uh, Techno Technological University uh, in the first and second semester if possible. So that was all about the expectations which we have from uh, educational institutions to begin with and I hope uh, all these things will be reinforced, it will become more uh, stronger and stronger with the days to come and all of you, because it's a national standardization effort, so uh, the contribution of every everybody, every institute, uh, educational institution, every manufacturing unit and all the people who are engaged in some kind of uh, science and technology activity, they should come forward and create a very good quality conscious culture in our country. So now, now next exercise will be how does the collaboration of BIS with educational institutions be mutually beneficial. I request all of you to kindly share your views, you can note down on a piece of paper and come here and give a short presentation about how we can be useful to each other. Standardization 